In insects, Malpighian tubules combine in large numbers into the boundary between the midgut and hindgut before the rectum and finally the anus. The structure of each Malpighian tubule includes a layer of epithelial cells with a basement membrane on the outside and a lumen on the inside. The epithelial cells along the boundary of the Malpighian tubule have narrow paracellular channels, not protein channels, but narrow gaps between them that are large enough to allow water and small solutes, but not large enough to allow proteins or large solutes. The mechanism to produce the filtrate works like this. Either sodium or more commonly potassium is pumped into the lumen. Because of the difference in charge, chloride follows passively. And any of potassium, sodium, and chloride enter from the extracellular fluid. That creates a high concentration gradient. Therefore, water moves in through paracellular channels, moving into this area of high concentration. And the water carries with it small solutes that include wastes and valuable molecules. The combination moves down into the gut. In the cells lining the gut, sodium is recovered and chloride will follow passively because of the charge. Potassium can also be recovered. The NKCC transporter moves in two chlorides, one sodium and one potassium. So regardless of whether sodium is the primary cation that's used to move solutes into the Malpighian tubules or whether it's potassium, either sodium or potassium can be moved by the sodium potassium pump. Valuable solutes are recovered in the same way with the same transporters as in other animals. Wastes are left behind to be excreted. In an insect, often the primary nitrogenous waste is uric acid, as in birds, which is in low concentration as the fluid enters the hindgut, but as water is removed, as water leaves following solutes, the uric acid is in higher and higher concentration. Once uric acid reaches saturation, the highest concentration it can be without crystallizing, it starts forming growing crystals. And as we get further and further, more water is recovered. As the crystals grow, each uric acid that joins a crystal is no longer a free solute. So the concentration of free uric acid never gets any higher. As water is taken out, the crystals just grow bigger and bigger until what is excreted is dry waste with large uric acid crystals.